Assalamu alaikum everyone. I hope you all are doing well. So in this video we will be talking about the CPU and microprocessors and you are watching CS by SS. So let's get started. So our agenda of this lesson will be uh, what is CPU and its components. Then we will be talking about microprocessors, von Neumann, Neumann architectures in detail. Then we will be talking about what are the registers, buses, and fetch decode cycle in computer system. And at the end, we will be talking about what are the embedded systems and their disadvantages, advantages, and why it's required. And at the end of the video, I am going to have uh, short quizzes as well, so please uh, be focused on this video so that you can answer those questions. So the first question is, what is the role of the central processing unit in our computer? I hope you already know that CPU is basically central processing unit. It is uh, usually called the brain of our system. And uh, CPU is basically consist of hardware. Computer system consists of hardware and software. There are further uh, classification between hardware. Some devices are input devices and some are output devices. There are some primary and secondary storage devices as well. We have already talked about input devices, output devices, and secondary storage and primary storage. Now we are talking about the fourth part of our uh, computer system that CPU. Okay, so CPU is usually not CPU is not input, not nor output device. In fact, it's a brain of our system, right? So some input devices I have already mentioned, and we have already discussed about all the input devices: mouse, CPU, keyboard, controller, sensors, microprocessors, and webcam. And output devices are basically monitor, phone, speaker, printer, plotter, motors, and a lot of other devices as well. Uh, if you want to know more about primary memory input output devices, do check my other videos. Data and commands are inputted by the user using an input devices. The central processing unit process that data by executing instructions and the results are outputted to an output devices. So basically what will happen in the system ki input devices ek input lengi user se theek hai us pe wo input jo hai input devices ke through ek cpu mein enter kiya jayega theek hai and then that cpu will process that data and then that result jo bhi wo result hoga jo bhi instructions execute karega uska result jo hai wo output devices pe hame display karwayega so in this way cpu is actually a bridge between input and output devices without cpu we can't do anything so this is the elaboration of everything we have input and for this input we can use input devices for the processing we will use cpu and this after processing output will be displayed on the output devices okay so input pretty much clear we will use input to input uh, we will use input devices to input process is basically any kind of Processing, addition हो रही है, subtraction हो रही है, file open कर रहे हैं, close कर रहे हैं, कुछ भी ऐसी की process हो रही है, उसको हम addition मतलब process हो रहे हैं, instructions execute हो रही हैं, तो उसको हम लोग process कहेंगे। कोई भी output जो है, that's basically just to display something on the screen, that's output। जैसे आप कोई भी एक software word लेते हैं, आप खोलते हो, so when you are opening word, you are using your mouse and you are using maybe you are using your keyboard. आप उसको प्रेस करते हैं इनपुट के थ्रू इनपुट डिवाइस के थ्रू फिर आपको वो ओपन करता है एंड व्हेन इट्स ओपन इट इज एक्चुअली आउटपुट बट जब आप क्लिक करते हो और तब तक जो जब तक वो आपकी फाइल ओपन नहीं होती है उसके बीच में जो सारा काम है दैट्स द सीपीयूस वर्क एंड इट्स कॉल्ड प्रोसेस नेक्स्ट इज व्हाट इज माइक्रोप्रोसेसर्स सो माइक्रोप्रोसेसर इज बेसिकली द टाइप ऑफ इंटीग्रेटेड सर्किट ऑन अ सिंगल चिप इट्स अ स्मॉल इलेक्ट्रॉनिकल सर्किट मेड अप ऑफ अ ट्रांजिस्टर से बना होता है कैपेसिटर्स रेजिस्टर्स एंड अदर इलेक्ट्रॉनिकल कंपोनेंट्स होते हैं इस स्मॉल से इलेक्ट्रॉनिकल सर्किट में राइट 
An integrated circuit contains a central processor designed to perform arithmetic and logical operators, which includes adding, subtracting, transferring numbers from one memory location to another and comparing two numbers. The single chip also contains input output interfaces and memory. ये जो microprocessor है एक single chip होती है जिसमें हमारे पास multiple transistors, capacitor, resistors वगैरह लगे होते हैं और उनको इस तरह से ज्वाइन किया जाता है जो कि आपको हेल्प हो आगे मैथमेटिक एंड लॉजिकल फंक्शंस को परफॉर्म करने के लिए राइट एंड दिस इज माइक्रो प्रोसेसर्स आर बेसिकली कॉम्पैक्ट वे ऑफ प्रोसेसिंग डेटा एंड कैन बी यूज्ड इन अ वाइड रेंज ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉनिकल डिवाइसेस लाइक जनरल पर्पस कंप्यूटर सिस्टम एंड एम्बेडेड सिस्टम ओके सो देयर इज अ वन क्वेश्चन आई हैव ऑलरेडी आस्क just to show you that how am i going to assess your skill at the end of this lesson so the question is what is the purpose of microprocessors i have given four parts four options you can choose any one please comment their answers in the comment section i will let you know whether it's right or wrong okay so let's just see what is von neumann architecture so cpu uh, components in a cpu in a computer that has a von neumann architecture and it developed the concepts of stored program computer in 1940s this architecture basically must which most modern days computers means modern days computers are using this von neumann architecture and is based on these three keys what are these three keys the first key is feature of this uh, architecture is stored program concept and von neumann architecture is data and instructions are stored in the same uh, memory as a binary data and instructions are basically will be stored on the same memory in a form of binary another feature of von neumann architecture is cpu fetches instruction from memory and executes them one at a time serially and then cpu then store the result back into the memory matlab kya hoga ki aap koi bhi instructions ko execute karna cha rahe ho to wo memory mein hi store honge ram mein and then cpu will access that memory to get that instruction and then usko execute karega one at a time ओके एंड देन जब प्रोसेसिंग कंप्लीट कंप्लीट हो जाएगी तो वो इंस्ट्रक्शंस को दोबारा से मेमोरी में ही डिस्प्ले करवाएंगे हम और स्टोर करवाएंगे सॉरी नेक्स्ट इज देर आर मल्टीपल कंपोनेंट्स ऑफ सीपीयू राइट द मेन कंपोनेंट्स ऑफ सीपीयू इज टू एग्जीक्यूट इंस्ट्रक्शंस एंड प्रोसेस मेन पर्पस इज टू एग्जीक्यूट इंस्ट्रक्शंस एंड प्रोसेस दैट राइट एंड फॉर दैट रीजन वी हैव टू मेन कंपोनेंट्स ऑफ सीपीयू द फर्स्ट वन इज कंट्रोल यूनिट the first one is cu control unit and alu arithmetic logic unit right the control unit controls the flow of data control unit just control will make sure that everything is under control it will control the flow of data around the cpu and the control unit also sends control signals yani everything related to the control either कि किस सीक्वेंस में इंस्ट्रक्शंस एग्जीक्यूट होंगी किस तरह से ओपरेंट प्रोसेस होंगे जिस तरह से इंस्ट्रक्शंस डीकोड होंगी किस तरह से टाइमिंग होगी हर ऑपरेशन की फी आर डूइंग मल्टीटास्किंग तो किस टास्क को कितना टाइम मिलेगा एवरीथिंग इज कंट्रोल्ड बाय दिस सी यू कंट्रोल्ड यूनिट एज द नेम इज स्पेलिंग एज कंट्रोल यूनिट एंड देन अरिथमेटिक लॉजिक यूनिट इट्स ए एल यू ए एल यू बेसिकली कैरीज आउट ऑल लॉजिकल ऑपरेशन लेट्स से आपको कुछ एडिशन करनी है लॉजिकल कंपैरिजन करना है किसी चीज़ों के बारे में मल्टीप्लिकेशन करनी है ऑल दिस फंक्शन आर एक्चुअली हैपनिंग विद द हेल्प ऑफ ए एल यू राइट इट परफॉर्म्स ऑल टाइप्स ऑफ कैलकुलेशन लॉजिकल ऑपरेशन एंड ए एल यू हैज़ अ बेल्ट एंड रजिस्टर्स वेर इट स्टोर इंटीरियम रिजल्ट ऑफ कैलकुलेशन मतलब ए एल यू के अपने रजिस्टर्स होते हैं रजिस्टर्स वी हैव ऑलरेडी टॉक अबाउट रजिस्टर्स If you want to know more about registry, you can check my storage devices video. So after calculation, the ALU sends data to MDR. MDR is one of the registers. Okay, so this is the basically overview uh, or the visual representation of the components of the C CPU. इसमें होता क्या है? This is my CPU. 
this is there are two parts this is my c uh, control unit and this is my arithmetic and logical unit and here i have accumulated accumulated is a register right and these are also registers we can use for different purposes program counter memory address register memory data register current instructions register these are also registers but used for different purposes this accumulator will basically used to process alu and this complete whole is called cpu okay so let's just talk about registers in detail now again so there are registers in there are multiple types of registers in cpu we have already uh, saw the visual representation now we will be talking about what are each registers will do the first one is pc mar mdr cir accumulator pc stands for program counter it's used to um, uh, store the addresses of the next instruction means it's going to be count the um, number of instructions to be fetched from the memory yani ki jitne bhi aapne programs instructions uh, yani fetch ki hai na memory se unka sirf count rakhega ki aapne itni instructions le li hain it's just like a, that ki aapne ek kuch bhi let's say buy kiya hai and you are just going to count down ki i have buy this thing this thing this thing so program counter is going to count the number of addresses uh, it's going to store the addresses of the next instruction to be fetched from memory memory address register basically store the address of the instruction memory address register aapke paas address kisi bhi instructions ka store karta hai and data to be fetched from or returned to the memory memory data register will store the data that has been fetched from memory or being written to the memory yani jo hum log memory se read karne wale hain usko bhi store karne ke liye use kiya jata hai aur jo hum data memory mein rakhwane wale hain uske liye bhi use kiya jata hai so data from mdr is sent to alu to be executed then current instruction register it store the instruction the cpu is currently decoding or executing accumulator accumulator is a temporarily storage uh, stores the results of the calculation performed by the arithmetic and logical unit i have already told you that alu is basically it's in alu unit aur wo sirf all the instructions which will be performed by alu will be stored temporarily in the accumulator register baad mein wo sare instructions pc mar mdr aur cir mein jayengi but for the time being we will be using accumulator for this purpose next as we have already talk about ki there are two components alu and cu units hote hain then we have different register jisme hame data rakhwana padta hai aur wapas bhi leke aana padta hai so for uh, saving the data and for accessing the data we have to use different bus buses right so by the way buses hoti ye hain ki jo bhi components it's it's also the component within the cpu and wider computer systems are connected by buses these are wires down which electronic signals and data travel the different buses are collectively called the system bus yani multiple buses ko aap collectively kehte ho system buses buses are basically just wires okay but we have different types of buses har bus ka different kaam hota hai jaise real life mein bhi aise hote hai na hamare paas बसेस तो देर आर लॉट ऑफ डेवो बसेस बट हर डेवो बसेस जो डिफरेंट रूट्स पे जा रही है उसका वही काम है सो देर आर थ्री टाइप बेसिक टाइप्स ऑफ बसेस द डेटा बस द कंट्रोल बस एंड द एड्रेस बस द डेटा बस ट्रांसमिट्स डेटा फ्रॉम सीपीयू टू मेमोरी और इनपुट आउटपुट कंट्रोलर इट इज बाय डायरेक्शनल व्हिच मींस डेटा कैन ट्रैवल इन बोथ डायरेक्शंस राइट मतलब हम रिसीव भी कर सकते हैं हम सेंड भी कर सकते हैं फ्रॉम सीपीयू टू मेमोरी और मेमोरी टू सीपीयू और इनपुट आउटपुट कंट्रोलर के थ्रू भी हम डेटा ट्रांसफर कर सकते हैं दी एड्रेस बस विल ट्रांसफर एड्रेसेस फ्रॉम द सीपीयू टू मेमोरी मतलब ये सिर्फ एड्रेसेस को सीपीयू से मेमोरी तक पहुंचाएगा इट इज यूनी डायरेक्शनल इट्स अ यूनि डायरेक्शन एंड इट्स नॉट बाय डायरेक्शनल यानी कि सिर्फ सीपीयू से मेमोरी में जा सकता है मेमोरी से सीपीयू में वापस नहीं आ सकता 
which means it addresses only go from the cpu to memory the control bus transfer control signals from the control unit to other components in the computer system such as memory input output controller the control bus is unidirectional it means control bus is also bidirectional we can send and we can receive data or signals through control bus but there is only one bus which is unidirectional that's address bus okay as you can see this is my cpu this is my memory input and output unit and you can see these two arrow but in address bus i have just one arrow from cpu i can get the data in address bus and from address through address bus i can give the data to memory or input output storage but it's not bidirectional memory can't send address to the cpu input output can't send the address to the cpu but data bus and control bus this is are you bidirectional you can send and receive data through control buses next as fetch decode execute cycle it's uh, basically one new one architecture model follow this cycle so what's happening in this cycle this is your control unit this is your arithmetic logic unit and this is your ram what's happening is that cpu in this inside the cpu control unit will fetch some data from ram it will decode and it will execute if there is some any uh, instructions needs to be required to execute is going to execute and again it's going to store in the ram and this cycle is going to be uh, followed again and again and again till then all the instruction has been executed so what's happening here cpu fetches an instruction from memory instruction is then decoded by the control unit into an opcode and operand then instruction is executed and the whole cycle is repeated with the next instruction in the process and this slide is actually telling you in detail what's happening instruction address the memory address of the instruction to be fetched is stored in the memory address register and is set down to the address bar bus the data at the memory address is transferred back to the cpu via the data bus when it is stored in the memory data register the instruction is copied into the current instruction register and the program counter increments decode instruction in the current instruction register is decoded by the control unit into an opcode and an operand operand means what function it needs to be required and opcode जो उसके ऑपरेंट्स हमारे पास होंगे ऑपरेशंस नीड टू बी परफॉर्म्ड एग्जीक्यूट द इंस्ट्रक्शन इज एग्जीक्यूटेड बाय ए एल यू द ऑप कोड इज परफॉर्म्ड ऑन द ऑपरेंट लेट्स से कि आपको कुछ दो नंबर्स को ऐड करना है सो एक्स एंड वाई इज योर ऑपरेंट बट एडिशन इज योर ऑप कोड the result is stored in the accumulator or written to a memory location within memory okay so next point is so see we are uh, always following fetch decode execute cycle because most of our new systems are following von neumann architecture so there is a tip for cpu performance there are three key factors that affect cpu performance the number of cores in your cpu the cache size and clock speed you need to able to identify these factors and explain how they affect to the computer's performance cpu units have multiple cores aapne jab bhi kabhi market mein buy karne jaate honge laptop so you must have saw that they, this is dual core and two core and four core laptop so it's actually will help us to process our system or uh, process the instructions effectively right so a dual core process has basically two core quad core have four cores and each core runs separate fetch decode execute cycle yani aap iske example aise hai ki pehle aap do cheezon se kaam kar rahe the now you are working with the four things and definitely four things are faster than the two things right 
independently from one another and at the same time meaning parallel processing can take place multiple core enable multitasking it can not be split between cores the more core on a computer has the more instruction that can be executed per seconds jitne zyada core aapke system mein honge your computer can process the instructions in a better way next is clock speed the clock speed is basically how many instruction the core can execute each second the clock speed is measured in hertz modern core can execute billions of instructions per second a gigahertz is a billion instruction per second a megahertz is a million instructions per second a cpu core with a clock speed at 3.4 gigahertz can execute 3.4 billion instructions per second third thing is that cache so we have already talk about cache in our storage devices but let's just have a quick recap cache is a small amount of memory situated within or close to the cpu with very fast read and write speed there are three types of um, cache type 1 2 and 3 it is used for storing frequently used instruction or data recently used instructions and instructions that are to be fetched and executed next in a process the impact of increasing the amount of cache is that more data can be stored there and accessed faster than it is it was in ram which improves the performance of the cpu double the number of cores does not necessarily mean double the number of instruction executed a second the core might have different clock speed and cache sizes as well so all together three things are going to affect our cpu's performance these things are cache cores and clock speed so whenever you are buying a best system or for your systems please look into the these three things very carefully next we have an instruction cycle so whenever you have to follow or to open some instructions so an instruction set is a list of all the commands that can be processed by a cpu so the uh, each instruction has a unique binary code and the table below uh, the this table is basically telling us what is the uh, instruction code for add systems is going to use this instruction subtract this lda load strain store this code and bra branch for this code okay so every instruction is going to be follow some instruction code codes and the table in this code each instruction has a mnemonics and we usually call these things mnemonics in assembly language it represents what is this function is going to do after an instruction is decoded into an opcode and an operand the cpu finds the opcode in the processor's instruction set if then it then knows what operations to perform when executing the instructions so instruction list this means a program creating using one computer's instruction set would not run on a computer containing a processes made by a different manufacturer for example a computer program created using intel instruction set would not run on a device containing an arm processor so that's why processors needs to you should know what is the processor and what instructions it's going to be followed because intel instruction set would not be followed in the arm processors because different code has been used in different instruction next in our last topic we will be talking about embedded system so in this what is embedded system embedded system is a computer software or a system with either one function or limited specific function built within a larger mechanical device it can be a one function or limited specific function for a larger mechanical device its purpose is to control the device and allow a user to interact with it 
it runs on firmware and does not have additional peripherals an embed system is different to a general purpose computer systems like a laptop or desktop computer which can be used to perform many different tasks the vast majority of microprocessors manufacturer are for use as embedded system some embedded systems are micro are microcontrolled microcontroller meaning they are part of an integrated circuits with built in memory embedded system usually have some form of analog or digital input so there are two types of micro embedded system microcontroller and microprocessors microcontroller basically integrated circuit containing a cpu and memory built into the same chip microprocessors integrated circuits containing only a cpu on the chip it can have ram rom peripheral needed to be added see this is your input device and this is your um, microchip or hardware and this is your built in system and with this built in system you can have a ram and rom as well and then you are having output devices so embedded system we have a lot of embedded system digital clock traffic light lightning system security system vending machine central heating system and they have possible input devices and possible output devices for digital clock we can have button to set the time mod and alarm and for uh, possible output we can show screen showing the time alarm for traffic lights we can use pedestrian button timer movement sensor and for output there is only light lighting system we can use movement sensors and output will be light security system keypad to enter alarm code camera movement sensors and output will be alarm vending machine we can use keyboard to make choices but actuator controlled movement of choice central heating system keypad to set temperature and temperature sensors and possible outputs are heat so see different embedded systems are used for different uh, purposes and according to that we have an input and output devices so there are multiple advantages of using embedded systems uh, some i have mentioned over here like low power consumptions small physical size low cost to manufacture they can be controlled remotely and can operate in real time and respond to input very quickly so i have some exam style question please read the question and try to answer this question in the comment section using the instruction set in the above table that would be the operand if the instruction was this this i have already given the part first part of this question in the my previous video in my initial slides please go and check what are the characteristics of von neumann architecture two marks question so i want two uh, answers two points one computer has a single core processor and the other has a dual core processor explain why having a dual core processor might improve the performance of the computer it's two marks question so definitely want, i want two points which bus is unidirectional you just have to mention tick address per data bus control bus or a system bus Then the next question is explain how an instruction is fetched using an von Neumann architecture. It's six marks question, so you have to mention six points. I have already <laughs> mentioned the answers of this question because it's quite lengthy, so you can check this. Last but not the least. so describe how an embedded system controls a washing machine 
is three marks question so you have to mention three points but before answering this question please do keep this thing in your mind that you have to use technical terms in every point like in this question you can use actuator you can use microprocessors you can use fetch decode cycle or you can use keypad as an input so please keep this thing in your mind whenever you are answering these types of question always use technical terms like sensors wherever you will use sensors wherever you will use microprocessors actuators in some input and output devices that's all for today and if you have any question do let me know in the comment section box and if you like my video please do give me a subscribe to subscribe and share my video with your friends thank you so much the love face